Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to my Beautiful Nights channel. This video is a continuance of my Bead Ventures series, and for this video I'm going to show you guys how to make this necklace. Now if you've watched several of my videos, then you know that I like to do all different kinds of jewelry, and I even like to make beaded objects like flip-flops and headbands and hair accessories, cell phone cases, I've done all kinds of beaded things. So um, one of the necklaces that I make quite often is a lariat, and I always get asked to do more lariats make them in different ways so I came up with this necklace design here which I'm thinking is kind of like a lariat because of how it's made but I'm gonna call it a lariat lasso necklace or a lasso necklace because it's kind of like a lasso it's got a big loop at one here and here and you pass this bead through it and because this is heavy this here falls down farther than this and this slides up to your throat so what uh, yeah I'm thinking about calling it a lariat lasso necklace it's a very simple easy design and you can use any beads you want for it really but you are going to want to stay with smaller beads for this area here so like uh, four millimeter beads and smaller however you can use beads that are long so like bugle beads or uh, what are those tubelet beads so like even like beads that are like long tubes like this as long as it's a thin bead that can easily pass through here and this is smooth you don't want a lot of big small big small big small do you know what I mean you want like a smooth um, strand so it can easily slide up and down through the slip if that makes sense but uh, yeah um, the beads I'm using for this necklace are all from the dollar bead box except for the seed beads that's the only thing that's mine oh and the head pin of course and the beach and wire and the crimps which is all basic things that everybody has in their jewelry making supply so uh, I'm gonna show you a close-up here of the beads that I'm using in my pattern in case you got the dollar bead box and you want to do the same thing so as you can see I made a loop right here I crimped my wire and I have like two inches of wire passing through here and this here is my pattern so I have, I'm going to show you the sections. I have this here, a C bead, a 4 millimeter. I think this is a 3 by 5 millimeter rundel. A 4 millimeter C bead, and then a 3 millimeter uh, check fire polish bead, a rondel, and then a 3 millimeter check fire polish. And this pattern right here is repeated throughout the entire piece. I'm actually not that crazy about the colors. I, I think it's pretty, but it's not exactly how I want it to be. I, I, I kind of want this to be uh, better, but uh, this is the best that I can come up with, so I am settling for it because I have a lot of other projects I'm working on right now, and I'm really excited about those, and I want to get them um, filmed soon. So this is where I'm stopping at with this piece. So as you can see, I, I made a loop here. I crimped it right. I slid all my beads down and then I have my focal bead here. This came in the dollar bead box, also this pearl. It's a shell pearl, so it's actually made with pieces of shell that's like compacted together somehow. And then they put the luster finish on it and I just made a wire wrapped loop there. And here is my crimp bead, so I'm going to slide that down. Okay, and then I'm going to feed my wire. I have a long piece of wire because I'm using up what was left of my spool. I'm going to turn it to waste. I'm going to feed my wire through my beads here. Now I'm just flattening this, but if you want, you can fold over, crimp it. I use both methods of crimping. I feel like some projects you have to flatten it. You can't fold it. And then there's other projects where you want it folded. And then there's some projects that I feel like I need a crimp cover. And then there's projects where I feel like I don't need a crimp cover, you know? It's all different. Really, you just got to work with what you got and see what looks best for that piece that you're working with. Alright, so there we go, feeding this down. So this bead here for the pearl, I think it's like a 14 millimeter pearl in case you're wondering. It is pretty large. Now what I like to do, I'm going to be flattening my crimp by the way. And I do recommend that you flatten the crimp here because the wires are going through like this and it's flared out. You want this to be flat so that your beads sit close to your crimp. I hope that makes sense. You'll have a gap 
if you don't have it, if you have it folded, you want to have a flattened crimp for that spot there, definitely. Alright, so I'm going to take my pliers, go like this. This is the wire that stays still, and this wire is the one that's adjustable. I'm going to pull this down, and let's see. How much slack do I want on this? That's the one that moves. I think about here is good. And I'm crimping it. Alright. Okay, I'm going to cut my wire. And there we go, here's my necklace. So my bead slides right down through this loop. And you wear it just like this. It's really cool. I like it. And I would also like to do a version of this necklace where there's a tassel down here, a beaded tassel. That would look cool. You could do a charm down here. I did a bead on, on a wire, but you could do different things for the end there. And instead of doing a beaded loop, if you have any donuts, or like a metal ring in your bead stash. You could put a metal ring on this and then you could pa pass something through it. But I also want to point out to you guys how small I made my loop here. So see how um, this you have to kind of push it through. Do you see what I mean? If I made this too big this would easily fall off but do you see how like I have to physically pull this off. So, let's say you're on a roller coaster and your necklace is flying all around your neck. Um, chances are I don't think this would come off because it does have some catch there because I made the loop just the right size. So like whenever I'm making bracelets with button closure, I always make sure that the button fits snugly through the loop. Do you know what I mean? Because if it's too big, it can fall off. So yeah. Anyways, I hope that this inspired you and gave you some ideas to make something with what you have in your bead stash because I think anybody could make a necklace like this as long as you have small beads like this that you can string up and you could do a beaded loop like I did or like I said you could do a ring and a focal point right there for your necklace so this is going to be a really neat and fun piece to wear and I'm excited and I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Please like this video, leave me a comment, subscribe if you want to see more of my videos and make sure that you click the bell button so that you're notified whenever I upload new videos and check me out on my social media sites. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. Thanks for watching.